Welcome everyone to this information session about Bell Shakespeare's Regional Teacher Mentorship. Of course, we are tuning in from all over Australia, but I would like to acknowledge that we are speaking to you from the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and we pay our respects to their elders past and present. So please feel free to share in the chat function um, the lands on which you are on right now. And also I thought it would be wonderful if you could add your town or region to your name. Uh, and that way, when people speak tonight, um, we'll be able to see the true spoken reach of this program. So I'll give everyone a moment to do that. Now, we are here to answer all of your questions about the Regional Teacher Mentorship Program. And we're really excited that we have a number of our alumni from this year, from last year, from many years back who have come through the program on this call. Um, and that's really important because as much as we can talk about how much we love this program and what it's all about, it is best to hear from teachers who have done it themselves, um, to hear firsthand how it's impacted them and their teaching. And a reminder, uh, as you would have noticed when you came in, that this is being recorded. Uh, and if you're watching this session as a recording, hello to you also. So this program is made possible by support from both the Australian Government Department of Education and Teachers Mutual Bank, who very excitedly are celebrating five years of supporting the program. And I'd like to invite Glinda Major from Teachers Mutual Bank to say a few words to officially welcome you tonight. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, and I'd like to say a special hi to Joan because um, we've been in contact about the original teaching mentorship um, uh, films that we're doing this year as part of our celebration. So hello to you, Joan. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here tonight. Um, the Regional Teacher Mentorship is one of our favourite uh, sponsorships and also Bill Shakespeare are one of our favourite partners. And the reason why we, we love the Regional Teacher Mentorship so much is that it is part of our DNA to really uh, immerse ourselves in trying to support professional development of teachers and build the capacity of teachers. And I think that uh, the Regional teacher mentorship is certainly something that it does that in spades. Um, you know, the way that it starts off with the, the workshops in Sydney and then you have that year-long um, year long mentorship with the, the gang at Bell Shakespeare. It, it really is an immersive um, experience. And we, part of what we've been doing with our five year celebration is actually going back and talking to, you know, the teachers who have been part of the um, regional teaching mentorship and finding out how it has actually changed their teaching, how it's had impact with their schools and also with their communities. So for us, this is such an exciting program and it's, it is really great to be part of it. Um, you know, and I think I, I do want to congratulate you all because I think something that we, you, you all know about yourselves, but often lots of other people don't know is that you um, sacrifice a lot of time and a lot of your personal energy to, uh, you know, your schools, your communities and, and your students, of course, and one of, one of the things I remember from this year's cohort who um, were part of uh, the Regional Teacher Mentorship was that one of the teachers said, you know, coming to uh, the workshop in, in Sydney was a gift, that they actually had a chance to replenish their energy and they actually got something that was given just to them. And I, I think that it's something that really should be encouraged and really should be celebrated. So really... I highly encourage you to take this opportunity. And as I said, I congratulate you all for taking the time out because this is the first step, learning more about it. And I hope to see all of you in 2022 for a face-to-face -face here in Sydney. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Glenda. And it's so wonderful to have teacher, Teachers Mutual Bank support. And we are particularly excited about the Five Years Project. And thank you to the teachers uh, on this call who are part of that as well and are sharing their stories. Okay, 
hello to everyone who's joined us while we've been speaking. Welcome. Uh, let's get started. My name is Joanna Erskine and I'm the Head of Education at Bell Shakespeare and I'm joined by my colleague Hugh McKinnon who is the Resident Artist in Education at Bell Shakespeare and Hugh and I are two of the presenters of the Regional Teacher Mentorship Program and I guess it's honestly one of the best things that we think we do at Bell Shakespeare. It's a really powerful program that goes far beyond Shakespeare and professional development. And I'm excited that you'll get to hear from teachers about how it has impacted them. We've trained nearly 300 teachers in this program, uh, which commenced in a different format all the way back in 2007. Uh, and if he's not here already, we are uh, probably going to have Tim Barclay from Maury on this call. He's here, Joe. Very first year. He's here. Tim's yeah. here. So Tim started in 2007 with the program. So very exciting. And he did return, return for some more many years later. Uh, so we'll start with some key information about the program itself and the application project, um, process. And then I am going to throw some questions to our alumni to answer. And we'll have time for questions um, from you um, of course, at the end, but at any stage of this, uh, just pop a question into the chat bar and Hugh and I will keep an eye out for it and we'll get to it. Uh, and RTM alumni, if I ask a question and you're happy to answer it or share or speak, could you just raise your virtual hand so that we know that you're happy to speak and we'll unmute you? I think that's going to be easiest because there's quite a lot of us here. Okay, a little bit from me. Let me share my screen. So, welcome to our information session. You have, this is us, who you heard from tonight. Okay, what is the Regional Teacher Mentorship? So, each year we select 30 teachers to receive a one year fully funded mentorship with Bell Shakespeare. It involves four days of training at Bell Shakespeare headquarters in Sydney and all travel accommodation, catering, professional learning expenses are provided. The only thing that we don't cover is the relief teaching. So that is something you have to get past your principal, but we cover everything else. Okay, you will complete a unit plan with feedback from the company. There will be regular check-ins and phone calls with a Bell Shakespeare mentor. You'll have access to resources and opportunities, and you'll have an ongoing relationship with the company beyond the mentorship program year. What's the content of the program? You'll receive masterclasses in Shakespeare's plays, language and history, innovative Shakespeare strategies to take straight into the classroom, activities and strategies that work for all types of learners and all ages, principles of active learning and how to build a physical classroom, content that can be adapted to any text, not just Shakespeare, really important networking and support networks of other regional teachers so you're not alone, strategies to build your own confidence and teaching practice, a huge range of resources, advice on how to train other teachers. That's a really big part of this program is we don't want to just train you. We want to allow you to train other teachers and have that impact, whether it's in your own school or other um, schools in your community and ongoing mentorship as and when you need it. Okay, the 2022 program dates. For applications, they close on the 22nd of November and we'll notify applicants the 6th of December whether you're successful or not. Now, the program is running later next year than it normally runs, uh, and that is thanks to COVID. We normally run it in February and March, but we just want to clear term one just in case we have any more border issues. Obviously, this is a program that's all about interstate travel, so we're pushing it to June next year. So we'll bring the teachers to Sydney in two groups, uh, the 3rd to the 6th of June and the 17th to the 20th of June. Next year's cohort will be able to do the program at our new home, which is in Pier 23 in Walsh Bay. Um, our alumni, you can visit at any time. Uh, and just noting that those dates there are for the program. Your travel sits outside of that. That doesn't include your travel. Okay, so just, just while you're switching slides, Joe, yes. I just want to reassure everybody that they can access this information after today. Absolutely. Um, it's going yeah. to pieces. Yes. Yes. So the recording of this meeting or the info on the slides will be somewhere where people can access it? 
yes, so we're going to have the recording on the website um, and all of this information is on the website as well. Um, just talking it through it with you. But yes, this will all be available at a later date. Yes, right. Uh, eligibility. So it's open to English or drama teachers. You have to be from a regional, rural or remote Australian school. You can be from a primary or a secondary school. Majority of our teachers are coming from secondary schools, but we do invite primary teachers to apply as well. You can be from any state or territory. And this is the important thing. You must have a clear case of need for the program. And I'm going to talk about what that means in the statement of intent. Okay, so your application, what you need to provide us is two things. The first is a statement of intent, and that is no more than two pages that addresses the following. Tell us about your school and community. What are the specific challenges faced in your school? And that could be anything. I'm not just talking about the kids don't like Shakespeare, anything. Uh, what is the current perception and place of Shakespeare in your school? How would the regional teacher mentorship benefit you and your school community? And that's really important. We don't just want to know how it's going to impact you personally. We want to know what is the ongoing impact um, outside of um, just you. And you also need a support letter from your school principal, no more than one page. Uh, to show their, the support and the value of the regional teacher mentorship to the school and a commitment to the support and provision of resources for the teaching of Shakespeare in your school. Because we want to know, uh, you, you all know how important it is to have that top-down support. It's all well and good for us to train you up, but you must have support for it to take effect. And then you'll be smiling, happy teachers like you've been through the program. I'm not picking favourites. This is the first picture that I found. It's one of our groups from this year. So some of you are on this call. Okay, that is the key information. So we invite teachers at any stage of their teaching career um, to do this program. We have had teachers, um, plenty of teachers who are first year out and very early, um, very, you know, um, you know, have, have a lot of challenges. And they might, a lot of, you know, first year teachers find themselves in regional schools heading up an English department of one and, you know, that, that's their challenge. But we've also got teachers all the way through to those who have te been teaching Shakespeare for 30 years, okay? So we're not, um, it's, it's all about that statement of need. You need to be able to paint a picture, tell us a story of what your challenges are and how this program, um, you know, can help. So that means that we're taking um, applications from, very small, very remote central schools through to schools that are, you know, on the fringes of capital cities. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, that term regional. Uh, it can change um, depending on where you're located, but you must really have a clear case for need. Um, and the teachers that are successful with their applications um, can outline really clearly what their challenges are because when we look at those applications, we want to be able to pick up an application and see how we can help. Know that, okay, I know exactly what to teach you or how to support you. And I know that Bell Shakespeare, Bell Shakespeare can help that teacher through this program and support them. Uh, some uh, support letters or statements of intent, um, you know, are wonderful, but they are teachers telling us about all the thing, all the wonderful things they're doing with Shakespeare, and there's not really much case of a need. And we think, great, seem to be doing really well. You know, I'm going to prioritise other applications that um, can clearly articulate a case of need, if that makes sense. Okay, and it's worth saying that the teachers, um, no matter what end of the spectrum you are, whether you're an early or a mid career or a late career teacher, uh, everyone takes so much away from this program and everyone finds it um, of value in different ways. Anything else to add to that, Hugh? Um, no, I don't think so. It's um, pretty comprehensive. I, um, are you gonna, if you're going to uh, throw it open to yeah, I've got, questions I've got some moment, questions for our alumni. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I had a couple of questions I might throw in if people don't get to them, okay. but I'll, I'll hold on to them for the moment. Okay, cool. Let everybody well, else I wanted ask to them start. First. I wanted to start um, by asking our alumni, if you could think back to before you did the program, why did you apply for the program? You know, where were you at? How were you feeling? What were some of the challenges you were experiencing? How, you know, what was your um, case of need? 
Anyone happy to share? I'll okay. speak. <laughs> Shelly. Yeah, I'll go. Um, I think before the program, I've been teaching drama in schools for about 10 years. Um, but also I've been able to work outside of schools with Shakespeare, which um, I'm very fortunate for. But even with that, I was really scared to teach drama, oh, sorry, Shakespeare in the drama classroom um, because it is so focused in English. Uh, and I find that even when I speak to other drama teachers, they don't include it in the curriculum. Um, so that's why when this program came up, I jumped on the chance because I wanted to know how can I do that well and how can I do that without stepping on English toes and how can I do that with keeping the students engaged and knowing that it's a different perspective than English. Mm. I love it because it's really interesting, isn't it? Shakespeare is usually the domain of the English classroom, which is really interesting in itself. Mm -hmm. Thanks, mm -hmm. Shelley. Okay, who's next? Joan. Oh, the phone, I thought we unmuted challenge. Um, I, I have been um, a lover and a fan of Shakespeare you know, basically since I was about 12 years old, but I have re I know, taught, taught overseas for 22 years. But when I recently returned to Australia, and recently is about nine years ago, um, I was in a small rural central school. And before I'd gone overseas, I, I had taught in a couple, I had taught in a um, central school. But what I found was that where I was, the perception of the, the community was that we were not as good as our high school that was um, a free bus 30 minutes up the road. And so I wanted to bring that idea that, you know, we could do anything with our students if, if they were willing to have a go. So my, even though I teach secondary and English teacher, um, my program, my challenge, my project was to teach Shakespeare from kindergarten up to year six. And mm. that's what I did. Um, my project was drama. So I did Kappa for a term. Um, in and now I, I teach um, library to the three to six uh, and the K12, kindergarten to year two. And one term of my life, I was teaching Shakespeare and it's amazing. They love it. And mm. little kindy kids can talk Shakespeare. So it was <laughs> wanting to show the community that, you know, don't reject us and say, you know, the high school up the road is better than us because we can offer a lot of stuff to their kids and um, Shakespeare being one of them. And, mm. um, you know, the parents thought, oh, it's, you know, really sort of intellectual and too hard, but it's not. You can get a kindy kid, a five-year-old, talking about Shakespeare if you... Um, approach it the right way with them and Bill Shakespeare was great um, for doing that and when I did this five years ago one of the um, resources that they had on there was um, Midsummer's Night Dream and I think Joanne, mm. Joanne you, jo, you did that um, with, with kids I think mm. and I remember talking to you and saying oh, I want to try it with primary but I don't really know and you said you know this is what you do and this is the way to approach it and yeah it's just great so anyone who's thinking about applying do so. <laughs> Well done. Thanks, Fantastic. Joan. It's incredible. And Joan, it's just been a multi-year project and it's just had the most amazing results. And I, I love this program because a lot of regional um, and rural schools are K-12 to or P-12. to And so a lot of the teachers come to us and I say, do you have primary, teach, primary kids in your school? Because you this is how to go and work with the primary teachers because obviously Shakespeare is not a common part of the primary curriculum. Um, thank you, Joan. Okay, Francesca, I'll throw to you. Um, yeah, okay. So um, I'm from a boys school down on um, the South Coast in Wollongong. And um, my biggest challenge was just getting any buy in from the boys at all with any of their English learning and getting, I guess, um, more broadly, although perhaps a bit more implicitly and not so overtly stated the lack of value that the school community generally places on English. Um, and so I, I don't know, I guess, I guess I got to the point where I um, had to realise and it was quite humbling to realise that just because I loved something didn't mean that everybody else was going to 
you know, jump on the train with me and run with it. And I had just come over to a boys' school from a co-ed school that I'd been at for 10 years. So it was all very much a culture shock and I needed a new way of teaching and approaching, teaching generally, but I suppose teaching Shakespeare is a really good place to start. So I wanted to get a bit of a refresher on um, practical ways to do that and innovative ways to do that. And it's certainly did that. And as I, I think I mentioned to you, Joe, um, I've used so much of what I learned at the um, at the, the workshops in a range of, of my English lessons. And it's been really, it's been really successful. So that, that was pretty much my challenge and um, it's all going very well so far, so, apart from right. COVID. Apart from that. <laughs> Thanks, Francesca. Okay, last one. I'm going to ask Natalie. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I think um, my challenges were that um, a lot of my kids are quite low literacy. Um, and similarly to Joan, I suppose, there's a perception existing that because they're low literacy, then the text that they should be engaging with should be very simple texts. So I really wanted to challenge that idea. And um, and through doing that, I wanted to really concentrate on making the classroom a much more active and engaging space. So I was really coming with the intention of wanting to learn dramatic uh, techniques and activities that were really going to just spark some interest in the kids in what we were learning and giving them an entry point into the literacy skills that would then build on that interest. Mm. So I feel like Bell Shakespeare has been perfect for that. Because we'll do lots of literacy, we'll do lots of you know intense learning of language and sentence structure and grammar and all of those things that we need. But then when things got a little bit intense, we'll throw to the very fun activities that became a, a kind of a base for what we were learning. So yeah, I found that um, my classroom has become much more engaging and much more democratic. It's a much more democratic space where because we're all getting up and giving things a go. The kids are feeling like, yeah, they've got lots to offer, their ideas are valued, and we can use those as a springboard for other writing. So, yeah, I'd like to say thank you. It's been a wonderful experience. Oh, thanks, Nat. Um, okay, I'm going to move through more questions. Thank you all for sharing. I really appreciate it. And um, we've just got such a geographic spread of teachers answering these questions and on this call. It's wonderful. Okay, my next question is and maybe I might throw to James because you had your hand up for the last one to start off with what how has the program benefited or and or changed your teaching of Shakespeare I want to jump in on that one yeah. how's the program <clears throat> changed yeah was hi, that James. for me sorry hi yes, Joanna please. um uh, look, I think it's, I mean, I, I'm a, I've been teaching for eight years now, but at the time that I was applying, I was part of the 2020 cohort. And, and by the time, you know, at the time that I was applying for that, you know, at the end of 2019, I would have considered myself still relatively fresh, you know, so it's, it's quite difficult, um, uh, you know, being, you know, a relatively early career teacher in a, in a regional context where you've got, you know, very senior teachers who who are your peers and and you know not a lot of people who are on a similar playing field to you um mm -hmm. you know so th there are people who you'll find and I'm, I'm sure it's the case in many different settings who um you know are very set in their ways um and the advice that they offer you is um you know really quite traditionalist in terms of approaches to teaching Shakespeare mm -hmm. um I think this program is something that really does change you know, the way that you approach something in a classroom and, and it really does, um, you know, work wonders in terms of, of building engagement and, and enhancing, um, you know, student interest. Um, I uh, have found myself, you know, um, for various reasons, teaching, uh, you know, a year nine modified course and a year 10 modified course this year. And, and even those students are, are able to access it as long as you pitch it in a way that's meaningful to them. And I think this program, um, you know, gives you uh, those skills that you need to engage that, you know, huge variety of learners that you find in a mainstream classroom. Um, you know, so, so personally for me, I, I found the, you know, the experience, you know, extremely valuable. Um, it really does upgauge your capacity as a, um, you know, a, a relatively inexperienced teacher. Um, and it gives you those skills that I now can, 
you know, impart onto, um, you know, the, those uh, first year art teachers and the, those people who were in my same position a few years ago, um, mm. who are coming through my department now. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, I, I can't speak highly of it enough. And, um, you know, it, it will give you skills that, you know, um, really do change the way that you approach this in the classroom. Mm. Thank you. Thanks, James. Okay, Lou. Over in Hay. Hi, Joe. Thanks. Um, I found it was um, very empowering, um, giving me the confidence to do a lot more physical um, uh, uh, things in the classroom. And in fact, the first year when I was doing the RTM, I had a fair bit of resistance from my year ten class because they weren't used to doing things like that. But but over the years since, by um, taking that more physical approach from um, year seven up, um, there's, a, there's a much more um, uh, accepting and um, engaging reaction from the kids. So it just gave me the confidence to, to do those physical things, which was quite a turnaround from, from the way Shakespeare had been taught in the past and, and what I thought were the expectations. And, and the kids still really enjoy all those things. Mm. And that's certainly... That's, that's really amazing. Mm. You go, here. Yeah. I was just going to say, Joe, it's really amazing to hear you say that, Lou, because that's the kind of thing that we... Like, it's so great to hear you say that you started implementing it in Year 7 and you've noticed the mm. change. You've noticed them embrace it because that's the kind of thing that we... Like, we always talk about it, Joe. I always talk to people about it and I say this will happen. I promise this will happen. But to, to have somebody say they've seen it happen is amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Lovely. Well, the, I guess the other thing is we, we have virtually no drama in, in the town or in the school. And um, so, so the kids aren't getting a, a lot of other experiences. Mm. So, so that makes that, that unit that, and we just did it last term, um, even more, um, uh, something that they enjoy so yeah. um, it's great it's even better when we can have Belle come to us but um, right. because again they don't even see performances um, most right. of our kids but um, you know seeing a, a player's performance or the wonderful week we had when Hugh and Owen did come to us you know that the kids still talk about that so it does have a <laughs> profound impact on mm. some of them <laughs> That's very special. I just wanted to note how it is. So it's an important point for English teachers. In this program, a lot of English teachers that come to us do find it quite difficult pushing through that comfort zone. You know, it's a comfortable domain for drama teachers, but English teachers in particular do find it difficult, but that's okay. We're there. We're, we're there to support you all the way through it. Um, thank you so much, Lou. Okay, I'm going to throw to Tim because he's here. And Tim's over in Maureen. Sure. Uh, just want to pick up on. Hi. How you doing, Joe? How you doing, Tim? Um, just want to pick up on some stuff that Lou said there because I think if you really want uh, good and true change, then it needs to be cultural. Uh, there needs to be a shift, and uh, as Joe was saying, you know, we need you know the principle behind it because it needs to be you know, a whole school thing to to, to get this change. And um, what Bell Shakespeare are uh, really good at doing and have been good at doing for um, twenty odd years is try to break this culture of teaching drama as um, as a novel. And uh, to get that cultural shift um, uh, is what separates RTM to um, so many other PDs out there is because while most PDs will say, all right, here's some resources, here's some things to do in your classroom, go have fun. Uh, what the RTM is all about is, yeah, this ongoing support and change uh, as to yeah, how can we engage our kids with Shakespeare, uh, not just Shakespeare, drama in general, uh, and not just dramatic text, but, uh, you know, there's, there's so much uh, that, that we can do um, in both the English and drama classroom that, that, you know, comes out of the RTM. So I think 
uh, that's the, the biggest thing that separates the ITM and, and probably uh, the one thing that makes it uh, better than just about any other PD. I will say it, better than any other PD I've been okay. on in my or well, 17, 18 years of teaching uh, is that the commitment is there to make a real change in the way that we teach Sheikh Shakespeare. And uh, I think that's really important. Thanks, Tim. That means a lot. Uh, and yeah, shout out to Tim, who's just been involved with the company and we've done so many wonderful projects with him, but uh, he came back and did the program. What, how, what was the year difference between Tim? Um, I started in 2007 and I think I came back nine years after that. So yeah. it was well, yeah. about 2016. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and, and, you know, if you want to apply again, I always just say, just give me a statement of intent. And if you can, you know, show me the challenges that you're facing that may have changed, which they did, um, you know, you can come back in the program. And the other thing to note uh, is you can absolutely apply from a school that has already um, participated in the program. We have, it's, in, in fact, that's wonderful if we can train multiple teachers from the school because then we have a real impact. Okay, I'm going to jump to Karen because Karen is from a primary school. Hi, Karen. Hi, yes, um, I just want to agree with that. I mean, I'm a late career teacher and it was undoubtedly the best professional learning I've ever done and I've done a lot of professional learning so and I want to encourage anyone who's in a primary school to to have a go because uh, I was a little bit unsure whether it would suit me or suit primary but um, it's been just fantastic unfortunately COVID has interfered with a lot of work that we wanted to do mm. but I worked with upper primary children who at our school, there's a lot of emphasis on sport. There's a lot of emphasis on sport in the community. Very little on drama and perhaps sort of those other creative arts. So that's why I was very keen to do it. And also the children's writing was very weak, which was to do a lot with their language, their vocabulary. And I was, hoping that this would impact on that and I mm. and I think that that has had a significant impact but in the initial group that I worked with um, an upper primary group were very reluctant very suspicious <laughs> 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 but after a few lessons even the most reluctant of them was just so enthusiastic it was like when are we going to have another lesson when are we going to do Shakespeare again it was just magic, the transformation. So I just want to say, you know, to any primary teacher, I, I couldn't recommend it highly enough. And we, we finished the year that year with a performance from the, the players coming down. Mm. And that just sort of was the icing on the cake. Um, that didn't quite work so well the next time because the, the, the performers couldn't come down. But um, I, I just want to thank you and, and recommend it very highly. And uh, I think it had, a, I think it changed the, uh, how those children perceived theatre, drama, Shakespeare, but I think it's had a, 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 wide, a wider impact. And um, I've been encouraging some of the other teachers at my school to, to have a go. So I'm, I'm doing my best to, to yeah. push them to, to, to carry it on. Thanks, Karen. So thank That's you. so wonderful. And yeah, that goes if, if you know primary teachers or there's primary teachers at mm. your school, encourage them to apply. Um, it's not a program just for high school. Uh, we do, when we get pockets of primary teachers, we, we um, kind of separate and do some separate activities, but mostly we're doing it all in the one room because everything that we're teaching is completely adaptable. And in fact, yes. after each exercise, we talk about how could you adapt this for lower literacy groups? How could you adapt this for senior students? You know, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, we might hear from Mark before I ask the next question. Hi, Mark Bunnett over in Darwin. Hello, lovely to, to be here. I, I got all my times mixed up and I've got another Zoom meeting in about eight minutes, but um, oh dear. I, 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 thought I, I thought I better just jump in. Um, so I'm a, a drama teacher at Darwin High School and uh, I, I participated in the RTM in 2018 
Um, there was no Shakespeare. I was being taught in the English department here, but there was no Shakespeare being done by the drama. Well, there was no, I was the, I was the drama department. Um, and so I had a great time down there. Uh, big impact on me. Um, always had an interest in Shakespeare anyway and uh, brought that back up here and introduced it into the stage one or the year 11 uh, curriculum. Um, and a couple of things we did was uh, we now put on a Shakespeare play, at least one per year. Uh, so we've done The Tempest and A Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, we did Hamlet, uh, a one hour production of Hamlet this year. Uh, the kids just really embrace it. They love it. And um, the, the opportunities or the skills I got from the RTM make introducing Shakespeare incredibly um easy i suppose um and it's always lovely to know that you've got uh, bell shakespeare there as well to um offer you advice or give you a hand we had hugh come up uh, and work with the kids a couple of years ago uh as well and we had the players in for the first time this year um who then auditioned um my kids for the uh, john bell scholarship um so one of the things i did which i guess was um one of the big changes is i i introduced the john bell scholarship as an assessment piece. So everybody in my stage one class now has to learn a monologue. Um, then they or everyone auditions uh, for the John Bell Scholarship. Um, so I assess that. It's one of their assessments. Uh, and uh, they get the experience of being with, um, with people from Bell Shakespeare. And we've, mm -hmm. and I've had a couple of people be fortunate enough to, to win a scholarship. We had some winners. <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, great opportunity. Um, you have to go. If you can, go, go. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. We'll let you jump off to your next meeting. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Let's, let's move on to the next question. Uh, I want to know, uh, probably people are wondering, what is that week in Sydney like? Uh, what do you do? What's the experience like? Does anyone want to talk about what the week, what your time with us at Bell Shakespeare HQ is like? Sam, you were smiling. I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I uh, participated in the mentorship program this year. Um, and uh, basically the way I describe it is imagine getting together with a whole bunch of like-minded, very enthusiastic, um, excited teachers from the country who are really looking <laughs> forward to having that opportunity to take a little bit of a break from the classroom um, spend a bit of time going out, um, going to the theatre, um, having the odd beverage or two, um, getting to make those great professional connections. Um, and the, like, the best part, obviously, is all of the strategies and the learning that you do um, with the pros from Bell Shakespeare. Uh, if you're thinking about um, becoming part of the mentorship program, I would say it's worth it uh, for Hugh's presentation on why Shakespeare. <laughs> I think it's almost worth it for that alone. Um, but it's it's a great opportunity to, to be a student for a week. Um, so you come in, you know, often we come into PD with our teacher hats on uh, and we think like, okay, I'm here to sit down and do some learning, uh, but it's not like that at all. Uh, every strategy you learn, you get on your feet and you participate in. Um, so that means that, like Joe said before, you are really pushed outside your comfort zone to start with, um, but the people that you're working with um, are so enthusiastic and so wonderful that they kind of drag you along, even if you are a little bit reluctant. Um, and you make lots of wonderful professional connections. Uh, you do get spoiled. Uh, it is nice to be spoiled for the week as well as teachers. Um, it's really nice to have that reward. Uh, but it's a fantastic week and it's, it's lots and lots of fun. Well, yes, you do. You do. I agree, Sam. You, you, you play hard, but we also work you hard. Don't, don't, get, <laughs> don't get any ideas. I think everyone's exhausted because we literally, Hugh and I, just fill you for four days with everything that we know. <laughs> And I then, was you know, I, I yeah. was glad Sam that you got to the work because like the first half of your description there made it sound like Ibiza. I was like, oh, <laughs> <everybody's>... 
But you know, it's such an important thing. Teachers, teachers, you need to be looked after, and that's a yeah. big part of it. It's not something that we put on the tin, but that's a big part of it. Is we feed you, we look after you, so that you can just learn. You know, that's that's what it's about, really. Be the student, as Sam said. That's that's what we want you to be. Okay. Anyone else? Ben Murray. Hello, Danny Barrel. Hello, hello. Did I su successfully unmute myself? You have the most incredible Zoom background, Ben. Oh, yeah, thank you. It's my, my book room. <laughs> Ninja Turtles figures here. Um, How was your week in Sydney with us? It was, it was incredible. Um, for me, just thinking and, and listening to other people talk, it was um, this really profound experience of um, remembering what it's like to be a student, um, to, to be a learner. And I remember um, distinctly that the, the very first activity um, after sitting down and having a little chat and Hugh asking us all to get up and the, the reticence within the room and, and we're all sort of a little bit apprehensive and ooh, do I, you know, emote as largely as I, I know I can. Um, and, I, and I think Hugh even commented and he said, look, you know, like, you're all a bit nervous about it. Imagine what your kids are like because they don't have all the background of the knowledge that you do. And that was a real aha moment and realising how confronting it can be for students to get up and and put themselves out there and and have all eyes on them within the classroom. Um, so it was, it was fantastic to to be able to um, see from their perspective from, from a certain extent. Um, it was it was nonstop and it was a blast and it was way too short. Um, and I wish I could have been there for four weeks instead of four days. Um, but you the bang for the buck and the time that you're there is incredible. And I'm still um, teasing stuff out of the resources and activities and, and things that I got. So thank you, Bill Shakespeare. Rest, rest assured, Ben, uh, in my memory, I don't recall you being reticent for a moment. <laughs> it was like, there was like two seconds where we're all like. It is a really important part that we do throw people, um, you know, in there and make the point, if you're feeling this, this is how your students are going to feel. Joan, did you want to add anything there? Um, I, I think I'm unmuted. Yes. I am. Okay. Um, I, I loved it. It was, it was the, uh, as people have been saying, it's the best PL you could ever do. Um, I drive 40 minutes to my school each day I'm in rural area and I've got a Dodge Kangaroos and a few times they've put my car off the road you know because they've hit it and um, I haven't been able to drive and just getting on a ferry <laughs> and going down <laughs> to where your old um, premises were that you know that that itself was worth um, going there but you you do you you, you had a mix of um, primary teachers secondary teachers Teachers from all across Australia, you know, South Australia, um, Tasmania, um, experienced teachers, primary teachers who had no experience, people who loved it, people who sort of thought, ah, oh, you know, I don't know how I feel about it. And the the great thing is, as has been said, is you were put there, you you develop this relationship with these people really quickly. Hugh is a great um, presenter, fantastic. Um, and everything down there is is for you and you get out of it what you want to get out of it and i i concur it, it's the best pl that you can do um bell shakespeare really really does look after us and you know thank you to teachers mutual for sponsoring it and allowing it to happen and really you know if, if i could have died the next day i would have not <laughs> wanted to have done anything else with my life and it's great to hear that you're going to apply again but it, it was a great week um and in just a different environment and and all you have to do is think about what you want to know and what you are being taught um and you don't have to worry about playground duties you know you've got 10 minutes to eat your lunch but you've got to go and you know go to copy stuff and find a parent all of that was taken <laughs> away and it was just focused on you and there's nothing wrong with that and um I have when I when I've come back, I have taken Bell's ideas, and I've written a couple of articles for um, the English Teacher Association for Metaphor, New South Wales English um, Magazine, and I've also because um, I'm president of Western Plains English Teacher Association, I have presented 
all that I've learned at Bell at um, one of our meetings. And it just keeps going on and going on and going on. So Bell gives you the opportunity to have four days and you will spend the rest of your teaching life giving back and then the rest of your life after that just wishing that, you know, you could do it all again. So, no, it, it was fantastic. Um, fantastic. That's what it's all about. Joan, can I quote you on the next year's bro show? If I could die tomorrow, I'd be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so much excellent marketing copy here, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. Yeah, we we do. What what I'll do is, if if you have your own question, um, please do pop it in the chat um, or put your hand up. While we wait for those, um, I, we have Tim and Francesca who are going to add something. Tim, do you want to go first? Yes, yeah, sir. Sam was talking about professional connections. And I just want to uh, pick up on that a little bit because I think that's been really important. Uh, so when we talk about uh, professional com connections, uh, you get amazing connections within the industry. So um, obviously uh, people in Bell Shakespeare and because of those connections that, that I've made, uh, I've been able to do so much both with Bell Shakespeare and outside of Bell Shakespeare. Um, uh, in imparting knowledge uh, as uh, Joan has done I've, I've you know done a, a number of um, of uh, uh, training myself uh, in at conferences in the other schools and that kind of thing and uh, you know I have friends uh, that or people that I can call friends that I met through Bell Shakespeare who are in the industry which is really helpful but uh, we also there's amazing connections with uh, your fellow, uh, RCM members because you know m most of the time when you go to PDs uh, you know you spend a, a, a few hours or even a couple of days with these people and at the end of it you all hold hands and sing kumbaya and pass yeah. around the email sheet and say that you're going to email each other every day uh, for the rest of your life and you never email those people Ooh. ever again uh, so I uh, as I said it was um way back in 2007 that I started and I'm still communicating with a handful of people from that original alumni. In fact, it was only two days ago that one of them messaged, messaged me with a, a, a question um, or, and, and something we were talking about there. So um, amazing. look, those connections, you, you're not going to connect with everyone and you're not going to have that relationship with everyone, but those relationships are there and they exist and um, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to, uh, to to experience those relationships twice, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, de definitely uh, those professional connections are uh, very worthwhile. That's wonderful. Yeah, it is really important that the group that you're working with, we then set up groups for you to, once you go back to school, start teaching these things, share I taught this today, it went really well, I've made this resource, sharing it, or I tried this, didn't go as planned, you know, and then you've got this group that can feed back to you. Okay, we've got some questions here. Um, is there anything in particular we should focus on in our statement of intent? Okay, your statement of intent is unique to you. What we want you to do is paint a picture of your community, paint a picture of your challenges, uh, and just tell us, um, be really honest, actually, be really honest. Um, uh, don't be honest about what you need, what you're struggling with, um, and just paint a picture of your community and how you think you could use this experience is what I would say there. Um, everyone's statement of intent is different. So don't worry about anything in particular that we're looking for. It's just clarity um, of what you need. And um, Margos from Oberon says, I'm amazed at the volume of support offered outside of the four-day intensive. Can you elaborate on what this support looks like exactly? Hugh, do you want to answer that one? Uh, yeah, well, it takes a couple of different um, forms. Um, we try to, uh, so part of the program is um, kind of Joe on the kind of uh, final day ties a lot of what we've been working on together and, and gets everybody to create a unit plan. Um, and then uh, part of the uh, the rest of the year is feedback on that unit plan and, and kind of ongoing conversation about that unit plan, whether or not it's something that you teach straight away or there is something that you work on for a while and then teach later in the future or whatever. It's kind of being there to uh, advise and help you build on that unit plan. But also outside of that, um, 
I, I there's nothing I love more than kind of getting random emails about you know asking oh what should I do in this situation or my my students are not responding to this in the way in the perfect way that I imagined they would when I spent four days with you in Sydney what the hell am I doing wrong so it's 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 it's, it's you know and 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 like Tim said um, those conversations happen years later not even in that same kind of. 12 month period. And, and mm. I don't know, it's, it's just the spirit of the program. We've never even considered that, that we wouldn't continue those relationships and, and continue those mm. conversations. It's not even really something that is, um, uh, you, uh, you know, structured. It's just, if you're an RTM teacher, you can email 10 years later. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, 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 and somebody yeah, will get back to you and, and, and say, think about this or, try this this way or you know or I've had uh, emails from people who have said I did the RTM and um, I did all that stuff but then I got moved to another school or I wasn't teaching for a while or I was teaching something slightly different and I've forgotten everything can you give me some you know can you give me some give me a kickstart you know give me some 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 some, a reminder to get me going again Uh, those kinds of things yeah so it's it's like I say it's it's, I guess it's in the spirit of the program is that a good way to describe it Joe? Yes. Also, I mean, there are there are structured um, like each term we organise phone calls with with your mentor. It might be who um, you know. You submit your unit plan. We give you feedback. Um, but it's also like we set up dates every term to say this is the week or two weeks we're going to arrange phone calls. Not everyone takes up the phone call because sometimes people are like, "I'm good. I don't need to chat." Or sometimes it's a quick phone call, or it's like, "Yes, I really need help." But people can reach out to us at any point. Um, I am going to say hello to Kathy because Kathy has just joined us from Tully. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Greetings. I I from <laughs> Queensland, so I was on Queensland time, and I thought, oh, I'm ten minutes early, and I'm really late. Yeah, popped so, in at the I, end. Hello. I, I did wonder where you were the whole time. I've been thinking to myself, where's Kathy? I, I I was in the spa with my grandson. Uh, can I just say a few words about? Uh, please, well, please do. You, okay. Um, I think I did this in 2018 or maybe 17. And being a, a dinosaur, I actually did know a lot about Shakespeare. Well, I thought so. Um, I learned so much more. It was just incredible. And it was amazing to be with really beginning people and, and some more experienced people um, and people from everywhere. Um, and coming from the deep north, um, that was tremendous as well. You know, like lurking around in the big smoke for four days was pretty incredible. But <laughs> these little things stay with you. Years down the track, I've, I've written a couple of papers for Wordsworth, e- English Teachers Association of Queensland um, Journal, um, applying many of these methodologies to poetry and to um, novels, to all sorts of things, um, and spread it far and wide in far north Queensland. But it's something like I've run into Hugh and Joanne at the University of New South Wales at things. Um, you know, it just is just another way of connecting with people, whether you're starting out or you've been there for some time. Um, and they're just a fabulous team because, you know, you can just, oh, yes, I'll, you know, do an email here or try to link up there. And mm-hmm. always available. They're very professional. The work that um, Hugh and um, with the Jack Yabsley, um, uh, what do you call it? Oh, Kings of Baxter. Yeah. Baxter. That was brilliant as well. So you can get off into all different tangents and people have done amazing different things. Um, mm. um, so I thoroughly recommend it to Thanks. everyone. Mm. Thanks, Cheers. Kathy. Bye. And I spe- special shout out to Kathy because after doing the RTM, she really took our advice on and drove up and down the coast to all different schools telling everyone to apply. And we received a whole lot of applications the next year that said, Kathy told me I needed to apply. <laughs> So go, Joe. Kathy, I think it's, like I think it's more like Kathy told me I have to apply. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a question with the program running later in the year. Will the end date extend past the 2022 school year? Yeah. So it will still be um, a full year mentorship. It just means our support and, and formal check-ins with you um, will, I guess, run to June um, of 2023. Yes. Yeah. Any final questions? Or anything else 
anything burning that anyone wanted to add? I mean, I, one of my questions was going to say, what would you say to teachers wondering whether they should apply? But I feel like everyone's just done that naturally. <laughs> um, anything else? Yeah, one of my other questions was going to be, but I, we kind of covered it naturally anyway, was to say that although the program is obviously based in Shakespeare and everything that we're doing has Shakespeare at its heart, everything can be applied uh, to other texts. As people have said, novels, poetry, their active learning principles, games, strategies, activities that can be applied. Francesca, did you wanna? Um, yeah, I kept putting my hand up and down, up and down because a lot of people were covering all the things Sorry. I was Day, but no, no, that's okay. Because like every time I heard, oh yeah, I agree with that. I'd put it down again. But the the one thing that I would say is, if anybody has also maybe got some colleagues who are utterly jaded and disillusioned with the teaching profession, please encourage them to do it. Because that was me before I got there. I was like, oh god, what else can I do with a stupid teaching qualification? And I was <laughs> desperate. I was desperate to get out of the profession and do anything else. And four days. And I'm rejuvenated and I'm excited. And, you know, my colleagues could literally see a physical change in my energy when I came back. And it's just been, it's just been incredible. And it's given me the passion to keep going probably for another nearly 20 years. So that was probably the most valuable thing for me, was just really reigniting um, my passion. And so, you know, obviously, I guess mostly everyone here tonight is probably already excited and passionate about the profession anyway. But if you know anyone who's not, tell them that this is the experience that they need because it's that that's what it was for me to, anyway so that was mm. that was probably my biggest takeaway and the the part that I valued the most it's really really giving me a new lease on my career so it's yeah. like educational crack yeah. <laughs> exactly I love it that's why you it's keep going a, back <laughs> yeah it's such a bonus you just change your name and reapply every year Francesca um yeah, one of my favourite stories was um, our, actually Hugh went to um, Broken Hill High. One of our teachers came through the program and then we went out to do a residency and, and this teacher said when he went back to the school after doing the program, the, the kids said, what's wrong with you, sir? You're like different. Why do you keep smiling? <laughs> and he actually just felt like a different, different teacher. Um, okay, we have a question. What if you've already worked Shakespeare into your curriculum? Yes, so this is not just for if you're not teaching Shakespeare. This is absolutely for you want to level up the way that you view and teach Shakespeare. Um, even Shakespeare to, teachers of Shakespeare who have been doing it for decades and decades um, will be able to refresh uh, their teaching styles. And it's difficult. I'm going to acknowledge that it is hard if you've been teaching in a certain way. And sometimes you will come and work with us and be really inspired by these new activities and then go back to your colleagues who are very stuck in the way that they teach Shakespeare and don't want to shift. And then we have a whole lot of advice on what to do in that situation. Um, but yes, it's absolutely for people if you've already integrated Shakespeare into, into your curriculum. Uh, and, and even if it's going well, we'll teach you how to level it up. Everyone can learn. Any final questions? Nope. I think that's a pretty good end point. Thank you so much to all of our alumni for joining us uh, and sharing your experiences and how it's kind of ongoing even many years later still having an impact. Uh, we really, really do encourage you to apply um, if you have if you're thinking about it um, and please also do spread the word um, about the, the program. If you if you've heard anything tonight and you thought, oh I know someone who might um, really benefit from this program, um, please do spread the word. 22nd of November is when uh, applications close and the program will run in June at our beautiful new premises and our new home next year down, down right next to the Harbour Bridge. I'm a little bit worried about running this program. There's literally a window that's just the Harbour Bridge. I'm like, I'm going to be teaching and everyone's going to be like this, looking the other way. But you must come and visit. We're very excited. Okay, anything else, Hugh, before we wrap up? Uh, no, I, I think that's all. Yeah, I'm, I'm also terrified of maintaining anybody's focus with that view. <laughs>
uh, next year. It's going to be pretty special. Yeah. A dedica dedicated education space and training yeah. space for everyone to come. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Have a lovely evening. Um, lovely to see you all. We hope to see lots of applications from you. And if, if there's anything that you think of after tonight, just get in touch, um, learning at Bell Shakespeare, or just look us up on the website. All the information is there. And you apply via the website. It's an online form. But, yeah, just do reach out. Thank you. And thanks, alumni. It's been Very a lovely much. little impromptu reunion. <laughs> Thank you. See you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.